Yeah, thanks, thanks, Duff. Um, just really excited to announce some, uh, new family members on, on our staff, and, and uh, uh, really excited about the opportunities that we have to grow and to uh, work more efficiently as a as a football program with the new hires. Uh, um, I'm really excited getting to know them uh, throughout the you know the um, interview process. Uh, it's been been nice. I, I I've known a number of them for. Uh, for a lot of years and so uh, being able to have them and their expertise and their background um, here with us is going to be really important. Um, more more importantly it's going to be op a huge opportunity for them to mentor the young men in our program. Uh, they're joining a, a wonderful staff and uh, this is just a, I think the first part of what we need to get done in our support staff. We're looking to add more obviously when we had our support staff in place we had John Swift, Jason Ayu, and Jack DeMooney that uh, took a load of the work and, and, and they were, I mean, they, they worked hard, they're troopers, and, but they were uh, pretty sp spread really thin and um, so thin that we had to go grab our, our equipment guy to help us out and, and, and that, then, you know, having Billy be involved with our uh, support staff as well, those four individuals really helped build the culture and, and uh, did a lot of work, but at the same time, uh, for me as a head coach, I saw them doing a lot of busy work and doing uh, way too much that, that they're becoming jack of all trades but uh, master of none. And this gives us an opportunity for them to uh, master their craft but also give an opportunity to expand and uh, be really efficient as a, as a program. And, and th this is a big part of it. We're looking for more opportunities and more hires and more people to come, come on board. But this is a great foundation for us to build, especially in the supporting staff uh, area. So, any questions? Or I turn over to John, or what? What do we do now? My job is done. These guys are coming. <laughs> no. <laughs> we'll start with some questions. Uh, we'll, we'll go Jared Lloyd, then Kevin Reynolds, and then Mitch Harper. Alani, talk about this process as you've been expanding the staff. You've touched on it, but what's it like for you as you look at the needs of the football team and then have the resources to kind of address it in these specific areas? How's, how's that process been for you? Well, ha having the added resources and, and, and the increased budget helps, but the it's, it's where do you um, use and how do you uh, organize uh, the budget where you can you know, get the most out of it, basically. And, and, and I think that, sure, money helps out and, and getting in, in more of a budget, but uh, it's, it's, it's what, where can we utilize it to help our program, uh, you know, become even better. And for me, it was people and finding the right people uh, to be connected with our, our players and connected with that will work really well with our staff, our, our coaching staff, and also work well with the fans and the um, – the faculty and staff on campus and the students on campus. So that all together, these, these, I'm really proud of, uh, of these new hires and uh, these men have done a great job in their lives. And I, I, I appreciate the people that they are uh, in their family life as well as what they can do professionally. So that's a huge uh, reason why I think this is going to be really successful for us. And I felt like it took some time, but uh, working with John and Tom and the rest of the group, I felt like uh, we did the right thing by, by adding these hires first. Well, you talked about how you're planning on adding more. I'm just curious what the timeline for that is. Is that before the 2022 season or before the Big 12 season? How, when do you kind of want to add more people to the staff? I don't know. I don't know if it's if it's like a, a mapped out type of deal, but I want to hire as many as possible. Let's just put, do it, put it that way. I want to hire all of you guys to be our own personal BYU media. <laughs> they can be biased to the core. And help us out. No, I, I don't. I, I'll take as much help as we can get, and as much as I'm going to ask for, probably way more than they're going to give us. But that's okay. Um, I, I just feel like the, the listen. I, I I love being the head coach, but I can I can uh, work a lot better when I have a bunch of uh, bright minds in, in the building, and um, and th this this helps us out. Be able to collaborate with so many people and and get ideas and and be innovative and find new ways to do things, uh, and and to really build on the culture that we have already established. Uh, that's something that you just you can't just say that you have culture and then and when it's established just hope that it works out you just have to keep feeding it and you have to keep working on it and finding new ways to do things and try to keep things fresh but also all, always looking to, to find ways to be updated and, 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 and with the times 
Alani, with, with these support staff hires and the analysts that were added in February, do you believe your staff now is on par with the Big 12 programs that you'll be facing beginning in 2023? I don't know. We, we kind of have an idea from how to run a program where we can get utilize the most um, uh, as far as helping with the analysts, with the coaches, and also the support staff. I, 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 I want to get as much help as possible because I, I really feel the more minds, the, the better for us. But um, we'll keep working with it. I, I think, uh, you know, I, Tom said it was unprecedented, which means that, that we're going to go through some waves of adding people, and I just don't know when they're going to happen. But I'm not really patient, and that's okay. I'll, I'll keep asking. And in the meantime, we've got to keep working towards getting this team ready to play, and that, that's the season. I know everything's in, in trying to get in place for the Big 12, but we're, we're functioning as if uh, we're, we're a P5 program. We've been doing that for a long time. The, the, the work is there. We, we just uh, allows our guys to, to maybe focus on something a little bit, bit unique and, and, and master their craft, but also find ways to really improve our program altogether. And when uh, I just felt like the guys were spread too thin, and now this gives us a chance for, for guys to really do well and, and magnify their jobs. Okay, before we go to the next question, let's give John a couple of minutes to talk about his role and maybe some of the, the position changes. Sure. Um, as, as we had the announcement happen about the Big 12, you know, one of the first things Kalani and I did was, was get together and evaluate you know, what, what does our current organization look like and, and how does it compare to those who we're going to be competing against. And we saw that there was a, a big gap there. And so we put our minds together and, and really started drawing up what does you know, the appropriate organization look like to be able to be competitive in the Big 12 and moving forward. And um, we're, we're starting to see now with the support of both Tom and um, President Worthen and, and President Borking, you know, the support there to, to help put that vision um, into place. And um, we're really excited about the bodies that we have. If you look at the uh, write-ups on each of the guys that we've added to the staff, as well as those who were already on the staff moving into new roles, there's a lot of veteran experience um, in a number of different roles, both within athletics, throughout you know, a myriad of different areas within athletics, as well as outside. And I think that experience is going to prove to be uh, really valuable as we transition into the Big 12 um, to further the, the culture that Kalani's built here, to bring more opportunities for, for all the guys on the team and to uh, help the program grow um, and, and be successful in this transition to the Big 12, and we're really excited about it. Awesome. Thank you, John. We'll take questions now from Jay Drew and then Patrick Kinnan. Sorry about that. Uh, Kalani, I wanted to ask you about Jason Ayu, if his uh, role changes at all or if he remains the NFL liaison and the other things he did. Yeah, we, the responsibilities on the in the program. I mean, we still have uh, a good number of people that are still here in, in, in their place and their in their jobs. And and all we're doing is now associating the responsibilities that were heavily placed on on John, Jason, and Jack, and, and kind of spreading them out. And then also adding some new things that that um, we really need for the program, the benefit of our players. And so um, there 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 will be more changes and more. Op uh, additions as we go along, but uh, right now there's there's a good number of guys that are currently still in, in, in our, I mean, Braden Woodall and we have Clay, so a lot of the guys are still in the same roles. Hey coach, I saw that you uh, had Mike Hall on there. What about uh, him attracted you to have him in your program? He makes noon basketball, staff basketball much more competitive. So that's what I saw. But yeah, you, I mean, it would only make it finally some form of competitive. I don't know about much more because nobody else can play, right? Well, when you when you when you the goal is the winner is at eleven, then you have to shift it and make it at seven. That means no one's shooting baskets. So in, in, in the same time, we had to add him. No, the, honestly, the, the expertise that he brings and and it the, listen, there's a lot of people that could come from some so many different backgrounds and areas of leadership that will really. Uh, it, it works with football. There's a there's a great correlation in leadership uh, out in the professional world, whether it's in academics or um, administration. That that has a lot of connection to what we're trying to do in this program, and specifically in our support staff. And so he, he'll bring a lot of expertise, uh, a lot of his his uh, 
unique um, background that will be very helpful, but also very similar to some of the guys on our team. And I'm looking forward to the the, the, the new hires being able to mentor the, the young men on our team and, and connect with them and, and just be another uh, another resource of information, but also a, a goal that they can see of someone that's done it before in very similar backgrounds. Okay, we'd like to take some, a question from uh, Sean Walker and then Mitch Harper. And this this may be for Coach, but now that I think about it, it might actually be a question for John. So I'll ask either one of you, um, whoever wants to step into it. But uh, a lot of these uh, kind of new hires are promotions over hires. Obviously, you're bringing in a couple of guys like Jason and, and some others. But for the most part, it's a lot of promotions. As you guys sort of look to expand the staff, was that intentional? Did you realize that like, there are a lot of people in the building that just have – the ability to, I guess, step up and, and kind of be assigned new responsibilities and that kind of thing. But I guess, was that intentional to promote rather than go out and find the guys across the country? Yeah, I'll, I'll start on this. And then if Kalani wants to expound, he can. But, but Kalani's vision has always been, um, you know, we got where we are in terms of the recent success of the program with the bodies that we had in the building, um, both on the coaching staff as well as on the support staff. And there's a lot of talent and a lot of hard work that was put in. And so to reward those efforts and to, to stick with the people who, who got us to the point that we're at made the most sense. And it just at that point became evaluating, okay, what are the skill sets that best suit each individual and um, how would that fit within a support staff that we're trying to create and, and build a successful program around. And so that's where you see a guy like Jack DeMooney, um, who was promoted into uh, the role of a director of football relations. He's an expert at making people in the community and on the outside program facing feel loved and, and feel his excitement and energy and the passion that Kalani has at the program. He is a great um, poster of and um, really makes others feel that. And so it made sense to have him stick with community relations, with alumni relations, with camps and with all the things that he would really be able to take that and run with it. Or Billy, who worked down in the equipment room, managing player um, experience as well as managing the equipment operations and the logistics of that. It made a lot of sense for him to shift into a director of football operations role where he could take similar things on, still focus on player experience, still focus on the day-to-day -day logistics of the program, just in a different avenue. And so it certainly made a lot of sense to, to look first within and see where things made sense, where we could shift people and really help them to buckle down and focus in on individual roles and, and being great at those. Um, and then to look out, to hire in, to, to fill other gaps that existed after that. Kalani, uh, how much of a willingness has there been from the higher administration, John mentioned President Worthen and Ward Kink, uh, to uh, make these additional hires and put BYU football in a position where it can have success in the Power Five ranks, how, how much of a willingness has there been from higher administration at the school? Well, yeah, the, the lead comes from them. So it starts from uh, President Worthen to, to President Warkink and then to Tom and filters down to me. And, and so when we, when we act and we're able to do things, it's because of them and the vision that they have for the program. And the, um, you know, we have our, our, it's great to have our administration be involved, but they're in the locker rooms, they're with the players, they talk with our coaches. And so they, they know exactly um, what, what needs to happen and, and, and the, the uh, importance and the, the influence that the added resources could provide for our players, the experience that it could enhance. Um, all that stuff comes from our, our, our administration first. And so when, when we work and we talk and we can communicate, they already have an idea of, of what needs to be added to our, our football program. And um, to go back on what, just to, I thought John did a great job of explaining it, but. The, uh, the, the promotions and things like that is, is also to help us retain our, our talent on, on our staff. And whether it's our coaches or our support staff, it's important that we keep the right people here. Uh, if we're looking to build a, 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 a program of success, stability is, is the key. And being able to promote and, and show people how important they are to this program uh, that, that, and retain them is going to be key for us doing that. Thanks, Coach. We got time for one more question. We'll go ahead and have uh, Kevin Reynolds. I'm curious what the process was like to bring in Justin Anderson and what his experience will do for you guys being at UVA and a Power Five program in that position as director of player personnel. 
I think you said it right there. I mean, he's, he has uh, he also has a background. If you look at the background, the bios of our uh, of the the people that we hired, you'll see uh, the extensive um, the diversity and the variety of the of the experience that they have, what they bring to the table for Justin specifically. He's been a coach before, so he's he's done it. He he's a teammate of mine. He he so he played here. Um, he knows what the BYU experience is all about. Uh, but he also had had the experience of seeing what it's like from a P5 level, and and uh, more recently when when the change was made to Virginia to to be hired at East Carolina quickly. And so it, it was it was um, the process was we you know we called and and talked to the people at East Carolina and asked for permission to speak with him and engage his interest and then as we started working that with it we we knew right away that he'd be a great fit here in this in this uh, in our program and a support staff so uh, there's still a lot of individuals out there that I still think could fit uh, the personalities the, the the identity the people that they are uh, could really enhance the program that's what we're trying to get done hey coach and uh, John thank you so much appreciate your time and joining us spending a few minutes today thanks guys thanks guys